Morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Dr. Shonipani Debele, a senior lecturer at the Department of African Languages. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Thank you. Um, well, I, I would say my journey as a researcher started in uh, 2011 when I was still doing uh, my master's degree at the University of KwaZulu Natal. It is then that um, I attended my first conference which was hosted by the African Languages Association of Southern Africa and uh, I presented um, the initial results of my research at that point and of course I think colleagues there were very supportive. From then I never looked back. Uh, I then developed my, I mean, my interest uh, in the field of uh, African languages so to say and uh, I started to research in that particular regard and that even prompted me to further my studies and to a PhD. Thank you, Doctor. Yes. What are you currently working on? Well, currently um, my research is uh, focusing on uh, the role of African languages in developing students' academic literacy. So what we are saying is that um, in the context of developing African languages as languages of the academy, as languages of teaching and learning, these languages as well should be part of the student's academic work, so to say. So in, 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 in actually uh, developing these languages, we are saying we must develop students' literacy as well. For example, if we are saying we are using African languages as languages of teaching and learning, it means that students are also supposed to write in these particular languages. So when we talk about these literacies, then for example, we take academic writing. We are saying we must develop their skills in academic writing as well in African languages. You will understand that um, most of the time, uh, a lot of resources are invested in developing students' academic literacies in relation to the English language, but nothing is done African languages. So I'm doing research in that particular regard and trying to find ways in which uh, we can do that, so to say. Okay, on that note, uh, Doctor, you will find that in most cases uh, we promote reading and writing, mm. whereas we leave behind the oral uh, cultural literacies. Mm. So what's your take on that? I think uh, in the context of promoting languages, so to say, I think the oral aspect is very important because in Africa we, 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 we never started with writing. We were actually uniquely oral. Yes. So I would say we should actually continue to develop the oral tradition. We should actually... Um, do away with it, but we should continue to develop it. But at the same time, we should adopt the written form as well, because uh, the two go hand in hand. Our oral traditions, uh, the oral way of doing things is part of us, it's part of our languages. So we cannot abandon it in any way. Once we abandon it, which means we are abandoning ourselves, it will always remain part of us. For example, uh, our poetry, so to say. Yes, uh, people write poems, uh, anthologies, etc. But that oral element still remains uh, important. We still need performances, oral performances, to maintain that tradition, that oral tradition that has always been part of our language and part of our culture, so to say. Thank you. Uh, doctor, when coming to, with reference to your work, then which school of thought or perspective inspire your writing? Well, um, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm so much uh, a, 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 a decolonialist uh, scholar, so to say, 
but of course um i i i i think i stand between uh trans the issues of transformation of course right um in higher education and uh, of course you can put me also within that sphere of decolonization but i don't want to put myself there because uh, i'm not really so much into that why am i saying that because um if you look at uh, the history of higher education in south africa uh, our higher education system and the curriculum so to say has been at the advantage of those that speak the language of teaching and learning the main language of teaching and learning which is uh, english and in some kind of cases africans so what then comes into into the sphere is that those students whose mother tongue or first language is not an african language are disadvantaged and uh, that disadvantage is not just disadvantage in that simple form of the word it is a form of social injustice it's a form of inequality and it's a form of actually uh demeaning the these students identity because with language goes with it a lot of things identity issues and many other things so within my thinking i believe that should be transformed that should be redressed so that um we can actually uh uh bring in social justice in our education social justice in our curriculum so to say so that uh those that benefited before are not the ones that are still benefiting even when we call we say we are in the age of democracy so to say everyone should benefit everyone should have an equal opportunity that's what i believe and uh, my research uh takes that particular end thank you so much it means to us that we need when we rethink we need to rethink our thinking yes okay then we, you we we need to rethink our, how we think as well yes. ngoki says we decolonize the mind the mind yes which means um you think in a different way of course when you are colonized the things are imposed on you but you move from that particular uh garbage and uh, try something new so to say transform redress and uh move towards empowering those that have been disadvantaged. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, are there any exciting gaps within your field? Yes, yes, yes. There is a lot. Uh, actually, interestingly, when students come to our department, uh, in particular, maybe they come to inquire about um, postgraduate studies, so to say. What they think is that we only focus on literature. Uh, maybe study novels, study uh, uh, linguistics, for example, uh, morphology, and many other aspects uh, in, in, in the field of languages. But uh, in the African languages, there's quite a lot of gaps, especially in the context of developing African languages. For example, um, there's this thing that we call uh, the digitalization of African languages. And uh, there is a lot that still needs to be there in that particular area in terms of uh, having people, having skills that can uh, participate in the development of human language technologies for our languages. For example, we need, uh, what we need, we need uh, spell checkers for our, our, our African language. So that if I'm a student, I'm writing my thesis in Isizulu, at least I'm not in the trap of going back to the dictionary. The computer does that for me, just like in English. Windows has all those spell checkers, grammatical checkers. We need all those applications. And who can develop us? And what needs to be done is people need to move into that area and start researching in that particular area. There's a lot that can be done in that area. So in maybe in summary, I would say the gap is in trying to integrate ICT with our African language, so to say. And then, Doctor, what message can you give to aspiring researchers? 
Well, um, I will speak to aspiring researchers in my field, and I will say um, there is a lot that needs to be done uh, in the field of African languages. Uh, one can decide to specialize whether in literature or in any other aspect of our African languages. But there is a lot that still needs to be done. I think what is important is um, commitment uh, and knowing uh, your niche area, what you want to specialize in. You don't need to be um, a jack of all trades, I will put it that way, but you need to focus on what exactly you are interested in. In that way, I think you will be able to prosper in research. Once you take everything, take this and that and that, then uh, you will stumble at the end. But if you focus, I believe uh, you can make a meaningful contribution in the field. Okay. Yes. Coming back to the African languages, yes. do we have strategies to, to preserve our languages? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, there are a lot of strategies that have been brought forward and uh, some are being implemented, of course. But uh, you see, we, we, with African languages, uh, there, is, there are a lot of challenges, so to say. Yes, uh, starting with policy. Uh, we have very good policy. They say uh, South Africa is the best policies, language policies in, in, in Africa, so in the continent and probably in the world. But what is lacking is the implementation of those policies. On paper, yes, we can say, wow, this is wonderful. But when it comes to implementing those particular policies, that's where we're lacking, so to say. So what we basically need is a plan of implementation. Maybe when I speak of a plan, I'll just give you an example of what is happening with ESCOM nowadays. Right? You see, they are saying we have a plan. By the 24th of December, there shouldn't be load shedding, or we should be just be a lot load. But there isn't anything like that for our languages. That's why we have policy, but nothing is happening. Of course, there are some initiatives, but they are actually happening at a very slow pace. So I think we should be able to start with a plan. And from that plan, and then we can implement all these different strategies, of course, that have been uh, uh, suggested by many different scholars. For example, some uh, uh, have uh, argued for the development of terminologies in these uh, languages so that at least uh, uh, students, for example, in higher education, if they are taught in an African languages, they can be able to have those terms in their language. For example, let's say maybe in the field of health sciences, you have equivalent uh, terms for particular terms in, um, in, uh, in, in, in the health sciences, in whatever discipline. Uh, the development of uh, African languages, integrating them with ICT, spoken to that. Um, the I mean the promotion of these languages as languages of research as well. We should see um, general publications, for example, uh, in African languages. We should see um, uh, databases. I think the library should be buying uh, from databases. Okay, okay, we should make actually available databases that have content in African languages, so to say, so that when a student comes and sits here, he knows if I go to that database, I can get everything that I want in African languages. So our languages should be visible uh, in the internet, so to say. Uh, I think we should continue to promote multilingualism in different ways in government departments, and uh, we should as well promote the economic value of our languages. Uh, for example, I would say at some point uh, one should be able to get a job because they can speak also an additional African language, so to say. And that will actually help to promote these languages and make, make people see the value of these languages. If, if, if you add a value, at the, at the moment there's no value. You know, if I have to go to an interview, I have to be able to be good in English. 
nothing about an African language. Even if I'm coming here to teach Isizu, still they want me to be good in English. You see? So that's problematic. People don't see value in our languages. Why should I learn a language that has no economic value, that is not used in business, that is not used in science? So we should work on that as well. I think in summary that would say that would be some of the strategies, of course, okay. in the developing of these languages. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. And then coming to Africa, mm -hmm. uh, should we promote Swahili as a medium for communication amongst African countries? Uh, well, I would say it's good that uh, we have that one language that we can point to uh, as the language of Africa, for example. That's, that's a good initiative. That's a good starting point, uh, so to say. But I believe in multilingualism, not in the dominance of one language in, um, over the others. Why? Because diversity is what we are in Africa. You see, and we should actually embrace that diversity. We should never see it as a problem. It's actually something worth celebrating. If I can speak, for example, let's take South Africa here. I have, uh, when I came in here, I greeted them in Isizulu, but they understood me. They responded in Sisutu, right? And then I also responded in Sisutu at a later stage because I do understand what they are saying. And you don't have to take that for granted. That's Africa, that's diversity. We understand our each other's languages. Okay. There shouldn't be an assumption that an Isisutu person doesn't understand an Isisutu. That's an assumption which is unfounded, so to say. We understand each other's languages. So that multilingualism, that diversity should be promoted. So if Swahili is promoted, Isisutu equally should also be promoted in Africa as well. Sesotho should also be promoted uh, in, in the continent as well. And other languages should also be given an opportunity to be spoken in other parts of uh, Africa, so to say. Yeah. Yes, it's a good initiative, but uh, other languages as well should be given space. Yes, not... Uh, because once we, we push one language so much, then we run the danger of... Uh, creating a situation that we are currently in, where English dominates every aspect of our life. And we don't want that. Actually, we lose our identity as Africa because the diversity that we have is what defines us as Africans. And we should celebrate that. And we should promote that diversity. Thank you so much, Dr. Then, apart from research, what are your other interests? No, I love soccer. I think that's uh, what uh, I, I like uh, mostly beyond uh, my research. And of course, uh, maybe I've gone too far to my hobbies, so to say, but also professionally, uh, I like teaching. Right. So I'm, I'm so invested on students. Um, uh, I like developing things. Students develop uh, their skills. Like I indicated earlier on to say, my research is now going through African languages and academic literacy. I, I, I just feel good when I see students being able to write well, right? Uh, students being able to articulate themselves very well in their writing, so to say. Right? I'll give you an example. Uh, when I give students work to do, uh, an assignment, Right. I give them three phases to say, you will consult me three times. Right. They come as a group. If it, that's a big class, they come as a group. First part, I tell them, okay, guys, you have written this, but this is how it's done. They work on that. Go and do it and come back again. Right. Just imagine if I'm teaching a class of 200 students and maybe 30 groups are coming every time. It's a lot of work. But I commit myself to doing that because I want them to learn something out of it. Not, not just writing an assignment, submitting and it's gone. I want them to learn something out of it. And out of my class, when they go out, 
then they should go and try to implement what I've taught them, maybe to other work or other modules that they are doing as well. So I'm very passionate about teaching and uh, developing students' uh, skills, literacy, etc. Yeah, and then of course, like I said, soccer is my hobby. Uh, I don't drink. I stay at home with my family. Right. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Doctor. Sebonga kakulu nyati. Hi, Sebonga nyati, Sebonga. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thanks.